The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Morning Markets Kickoff with your host, Tommy O'Brien. Now, Tommy O'Brien. Good morning, everybody. I'm Tom O'Brien coming to you live from TFNN. This is Tommy O'Brien. We're going to say good morning to everybody. It's coming. Say good morning, everybody. Good morning, everybody. Yeah. So is everybody having a good morning? Again, good morning. Again, oh, man. We got it made, Tommy. What do we got? Tell them. You got puffs in there? Are those Elmo? Elmo Puffs? Oh, those are the best, aren't they? What do you got? What's this? What do you got? You got everything. You got your T-Rex? You got your T-Rex and your car? T-Rex and my car and Spider-Man. And Spider-Man. You got your Spider-Man shirt. He's got a Spider-Man shirt. You're looking so good. They were the skeleton back there. Where's the skeleton? I got the skeleton right here. Is it almost Halloween? Tell him, Tommy. Almost Halloween. Almost Halloween. How many days? Seven days. Seven days. Ooh. All right, we're going to jump around. We got Tommy joining us for the hour. We'll oh, see how. It's Tom's and Friends Spider. It's Thomas and Friends Spider. We're going to see how we do. We got markets in positive territory to kick things off, folks. Let's get into the action. We got the S&Ps. Let's put it back to a 10-minute chart. We zoom in on the action yesterday. Let's take this Fibonacci off here for some clarity. And quite the exception. Hey. We found the ghost. You found the ghost? Tommy is big on Halloween this year, man. He's two and a half. He's bigger than that, man. He's almost two and nine months, which is remarkable. Oh, and here he, comes the ghost. Tommy, are you excited for Halloween? Same for Halloween. Oh, man. Oh, man. Oh, man is right. Are we going to go trick-or-treating? Trick-or-treat. What do you say? Trick-or-treat. 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 And what did he get you? What do they get you? Candy. Candy. Oh, the best. Yeah. Oh, the best. The best. Uh, so he loves watching Halloween decorations right now. He loves watching, uh, of all things, I'll tell you, we make it to Target occasionally. He likes watching Target shows on YouTube, as in videos on YouTube, displaying all of the decorations at different stores. Target is one of the algorithms that they got him in, but it is interesting when you check it out in terms of number one. He's on YouTube. Remarkable. I mean, the videos that we watch, for instance, there's one talking about Target, Look, their decorations for the 2023. Here comes the ghost. Here comes the ghost. Got like 10,000 views. There's amazing the ghost, say hi to think to of, them. say hi to the ghost, to think about what you can do in terms of creating content these days. There's 10,000 views. Ghost you just walk around there. Target. Family walks around it's Target. Look, there he is. There he is. All right, Tommy, we got a big day. We got some big tech earnings. Do you know that? We got big tech earnings. Do you know why I talked about YouTube? Let's see. Is it Google today? Can I'm getting get spun around. Can I get the it volume? sure is. YouTube has their earnings out Can today. Can I get the volume? Yeah, he's, he's on to me. I turned down the volume before we kicked that off. We can't do it too target, too, too target, too loud, okay? Oh. Uh, but we have... Google and Microsoft after the bell today as tech earnings kick into high gear. We got markets trading in positive territory in the overnight session. You got Google out with their numbers after the bell tonight. Ahead of those numbers, you're up by about $1.30. You got Microsoft out with their numbers as well. Microsoft shares charge higher yesterday. This morning, you're trading up about uh, similar action, up about buck fifty. They're out with their numbers after the bell tonight. We jump around to what else we got going on. The big dog, Apple, their earnings are next week. So we got many of the tech earnings this week. Apple, their earnings next week. We're trading right now at 173. You jump over to Amazon shares. Amazon trading up about a buck fifty. Amazon with their numbers on Thursday, I believe. Yes, Amazon with their numbers on Thursday. What was it? Was it Meta coming out on Wednesday? Yeah, and Meta, Facebook out with their numbers tomorrow. So we get Microsoft 
Google today after the bell, Meta shares tomorrow after the bell, Amazon shares Thursday after the bell. We also get one out of three companies reporting in the S&P 500 about this week. Maybe it's three out of 10, about 30 to 35 percent of the S&P reporting this week alone. So we, a huge week of earnings. What do you think? What do you think? You want to see YouTube, Tommy? I see YouTube. Oh, look, I type in you. Uh, their symbol should be YouTube if they spin it off. Uh, they never oh, will. I'm going to get your computer in a second. Uh, but we take a look at Google, and it's not a coincidence. I've been talking about it, man. No matter what they talk about for antitrust, there's only one Google. There's only one YouTube. Uh, Google probably going to lose their monopoly, at least in the terms of how the percentage. I want to see me. You want to see me? There you are. Oh. Oh. Where's me go? Oh, well, they're looking at the charts now. Where's me go? Yeah, you like looking at that set, huh? You doing the show with Daddy today? You doing the show with Daddy? Yeah. Skip ad. Skip ad. You hear that? Oh, skip yeah. ad. He knows about skip ad. Skeleton's skipping playing the song. Skeleton's playing the song. Think about where your mind was when you're two and a half, right? And then think about kids these days. And listen, screen time, I'm sure it can get uh, heated between parents in terms of screen time, how much screen time. There's good screen time and there's bad screen time. I talk about it all the time, folks. And good screen time. It's amazing what it can do in terms of learning, alphabet, singing, numbers. One of the programs we watch on Netflix all the time is a program called Number Blocks. Amazing in terms of just uh, addition, subtraction, simple numbers, one through 10 when you're first starting. But how about that skip ad, right? Two and a half years old and you're all about skipping ads on YouTube. Pretty amazing. All right, let's jump around as we finish up the first session here. We got crude backing off a bit. We'll put it back to a five-minute chart. You drive down to 8509 early this morning. We're trading at 8534. How about Bitcoin, man? It's not stopping. The Bitcoin ETF is coming, and it's charging higher, up to 35000 in the overnight. We're trading up $2,970. You're up almost 10% right now on Bitcoin shares. How about Bitcoin, Tommy? Maybe we'll have to get you a Bitcoin. He's got no big – we got to get him some Bitcoin, I think, folks. Gold backing off a bit. Gold off about $11 this morning. We jump to yields. A little bit of a reversal of the trend of yesterday, and boy, you talk about an acceleration, man. Notes and bonds trading to higher price, lower yield. The 10-year right now, we're backing off a bit. We were up to almost 106.23 in the overnight. You drive down to 106.05. We're trading right now at 106.11. You're negative by five ticks. The 30-year, negative by seven ticks. We're pretty much, where, pretty much where we finished the session up. Can I make it bigger and bigger? You want to see it bigger? Oh, that's a bigger one, huh? And you got to jump over to the dollar index, man. Because, boy, you talk about it, right? Quite the reversal. We'll see how this wait. Oh, you like that mouse? Yeah, that's daddy's mouse. I know. Yeah, that's daddy's mouse. We're going to get you your computer at the break, okay? The dollar index back above 106. You talk about volatility in the currencies, man. We got the dollar index right now up. Basically half a dollar in terms of trading up 50 pennies at 106.04 right now. Quite the surge higher in the dollar, and we jump over to the VIX. Still sitting right near 20. Yesterday, early in the hours of yesterday, we were up flirting with 23. The market traded higher. We trade down to about 20, and that's where we're sitting right now. 1968 in the VIX as we come into the defining week of earnings. That's the case, man. Microsoft, Google, Meta. Amazon, all coming out today, Wednesday, Thursday, along with, like I mentioned, almost one out of three S&P 500 companies. To talk about some of the action, we'll be coming back. Talk to our man Kevin Hanks from the Schwab Network, Fast Market. Don't go away, folks. If you're looking for potential trading setups in the stock market, then Rocket Equities and Options Report is a newsletter you should try. Tommy O'Brien delivers options and equity trades when the markets present them using a combination of fundamentals and technicals. Sign up for Rocket Equities and Options Report today with a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. For all the details and to start your subscription today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors.
Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything, from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at tfnn.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com, educating investors. Steve Rhodes started his trading career as a student almost 20 years ago, and the student has now become the master. Steve won the prestigious Timer of the Year Award in 2018 and barely missed that mark again in 2019, finishing at number two for the year. An amazing accomplishment. Steve Rhodes is committed to sharing his techniques and knowledge with anyone who wants to learn, and he shares his vast amount of trading knowledge every day in his Mastering Probability newsletter. Steve's award-winning newsletter, Mastering Probability, is delivered every trading day with updates throughout the afternoon. Sign up for Steve's market newsletter, Mastering Probability, and you'll receive access to seven of Steve's educational webinars absolutely free. At TFNN, all our newsletters come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have absolutely nothing to worry about. Visit TFNN.com and try Mastering Probability 30 days risk-free today. TFNN, education investors. TFNN has launched the Tiger's Den, hosted at Discord. TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. The Tiger's Den, available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. Sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders. Just visit the front page of TFNN.com. Welcome back, folks. Tom O'Brien, Tommy O'Brien. We're both joining you this morning. We got the S&Ps up about 20. We got the NASDAQ 100 up by 64. Markets in the positive this morning. We got volatility in yields, volatility in the dollar index. To talk about some of the action, hey, let's... I want my mouse. Okay, we'll get it. We got to talk to our man, Kevin Hinks. No, I don't think we have your mouse right now. I got to find it. Folks, let's jump over to our man, Kevin Hinks. Every trading day, 12 o'clock from the Schwab Network, Fast Market right here. And Kevin, we it's not just the two of us today. I got my son, Tommy, here, and I got him because he's a YouTube fanatic, Kevin. And I tell him, Tommy, and we got YouTube uh, earnings with Google tonight. Kevin Hinks, good morning. Good morning, Tommy. Yeah, there's a lot, certainly a lot going on today with uh, metrics, to er, you know, pre-market metrics to start the day. Big earnings coming out after the bell. I've got one, two, three, four, five, six stocks that came out with earnings before the bell, all higher pre-market. But, Tommy, there's still some things out there that worry this market. And, you know, very weak. You know, if you're looking at your screen this morning, your, your listeners, you're wondering, well, with all these risk-off assets, why is the dollar spiking higher here or, or solidly higher up? about a half percent. We had very weak PMI uh, data out of Eurozone and out of Germany overnight. And it looks like the European economy is starting to weaken, Tommy, and that means that may halt their move on interest rates, which would thus make our dollar rally, Tommy. So uh, strong dollar today threatens this, ra this rally that we saw all day yesterday and at least to start the day this morning. So today's going to be an interesting day. There's some certainly some cross currents to start the day. But as we get to the second half of the day, Tommy, it's going to be all about earnings in you know big names, Microsoft, Google, Alphabet, Snap, Visa, Teladoc, big names coming out with earnings after the bell today. And then Boeing and 
uh, T-Mobile and Hilton uh, tomorrow before the Open. So here we go, Tommy. Brace yourself because earnings are coming uh, fast and furious. Kevin, I appreciate the, the wraparound. We talked about yields in the dollar this morning. I was a little bit lost, so I appreciate some of that car- uh, no, no, clarity. No, no, oh, I know. We got Tommy here this morning, Kevin. Can you tell? Um, <laughs> dollar index, you talk about a resurgence. I tell you what. Hey, we're numbers. talking to our man, Kevin Hinks. We got to talk to him because he, he helps us to see what's going on in the market. Hey, Kevin, what I about? Want, I want numbers. He's fired up this I morning. You can see him right here, buddy. Look. Yeah. I, I wanted to get your take on general sentiment, Kevin, coming in for the tech companies. Uh, I had Google up there on the chart as I was coming into you. It's been quite a rally for all of these companies. What's your general take on what they have to deliver? Because it seems like expectations are almost sky high right now with how a lot of them are priced, pushing almost you know right near all-time highs as we come into, like you mentioned, Google, Microsoft, Meta, Amazon. Yeah, for, for the names coming out today, you're right, Tommy. They've had huge rallies this year. Microsoft and Google Alphabet, a lot of this is going to be, and you're going to hear this theme throughout the week, digital ad spend, cloud growth, right? I, I think a lot of these companies, when it comes to AI and it comes to all the investments and the hype around AI, they want to see 2023 investment turn into 2024 revenue. So... They want these investments, you know, investors are going to want these investments to start paying off, Tommy, or guidance towards them paying off. So, yeah, what I, I think you're, you're going to want to see growth in the cloud, uh, you know, in terms of Microsoft, Google Alphabet, and then Amazon later in the week, obviously. But yeah. digital ad spend is really going to, um, you know, be an interesting discussion going forward through the rest of the week because a lot of these companies make most or a big portion of their earnings comes from, you know, digital advertising. So I think this is going to be one of the topics, but the cloud will be a topic. There'll be a lot of topics, Tom. And I'm going to jump to yields. What do you think of the the rally that we got? Are you looking for higher yields, Kevin? And this is the million dollar question to put it lightly. But quite the reversal off of the lows yesterday. We saw it on the 10-year. We saw it on the 30-year, of course. Uh, what do you think of the action? Do you like that, buddy? What do you think of the action and yields as we peaked out above 5% just like that? We're back at 4.86. But what are your general feelings on on quite the acceleration we got to that 5% mark on the 10-year? And then we've seen a little bit of a pullback, of course. Yeah, I think bonds and notes got oversold. And therefore, yields got over got you know, uh, overbought uh, from a, a relative strength level. I think you're seeing a technical back off here. Some of the comments yesterday from uh, Ackman, uh, you know, talked about covering a bond position. That probably aided yes. some of it, but it looked like some exhaustion or some fatigue up at those uh, down at those lo- levels in bonds, some selling. But do I think it's done? Probably not, Tommy. The U.S. data keeps coming in strong, although we're going to get a core year-over-year PCE data on Friday that it's expecting to come from 3.9 to 3.7. So that would be good news for people looking at overall inflation. Um, so, But we're also going to get a GDP, a first look at third quarter GDP that might have a four handle on it, Tommy. So there's a lot of things going on here, but so far... The, in, the U.S. economy is strong. The data is coming in strong. But um, it looks. It also looks like inflation is not a major worry. So, yeah, there's a lot of things going on here, Tommy. A lot of reasons for speculation in both directions, frankly. I appreciate the insight, man. I know Tommy's chiming in here. He's excited, Kevin. He's eating his puffs. He's watching some YouTube. He's playing. You know what's amazing, man? You look at it, right? So here's what he's doing, Kevin, in light of – he's playing on YouTube – and he's playing on Microsoft Paint. And who's coming out with the earnings tonight, man? Right? Google and Microsoft, of course, and the, the simple things, um, even at two years old. With that in mind, I can imagine a couple companies you might be talking about on Fast Market at 12 today. What are you guys talking about for equities, Kevin? Yeah, we will look at Microsoft uh, in our first segment. Uh, like Foley is going to do a presentation on Visa and then Google Alphabet. 
So big names today that we're looking at. Uh, you know, Visa is also a fun one to see, like Folio's data on digital wallets and digital spending, right? And because that's where this economy seems to be migrating. So, and Google Alphabet, like Folio, doing a presentation on Visa today. Nice, and I pulled up Visa as you were talking about it. Boy, strong equity up to 231. Excuse me. And, of course, the two other main events out there, Microsoft and Google Alphabet. Kevin, I appreciate the time on a busy morning, man. doesn't get much busier than today. We'll be watching at 12 o'clock, and we'll talk to you tomorrow, brother. Have a great day, Tommy. Say bye to Kevin. Bye, Kevin. Bye, Kevin. We'll talk to you tomorrow, man. Thanks, Kevin. That's right. Folks, check it out every day. 12 noon Eastern time from the Schwab Network Fast Market with your host, Tom White, Kevin Hinks. They do an outstanding job, and uh, this is a week to catch it. They do an outstanding job. Stop. Tell them. Stop. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, we're going to be watching Fast Market at 12? Or you're 12. Yeah, we're watching Fast Market at 12. You should be watching Fast Market at 12. But before then, we got... Two and a half hours until that program at 12. We got two and a half hours of market action. Tell them we got the opening bell. The opening bell. It's coming back. Coming back. Right back. Right back. And we'll be back, folks. Currencies, commodities, and bond markets are as important as ever right now with how they're driving the volatility in equity markets across the globe, which is why it's a great time to try out Teddy Kegstat's Tiger Forex report. Teddy Kegstat breaks down the Forex markets every Monday using his 30 plus years of experience as a trading veteran of futures, Forex, stocks, and options. Teddy releases his weekly Tiger Forex report every Monday morning with coverage of all the major currency pairs, including the dollar index, the euro dollar, pound dollar, dollar Swiss, dollar yen, as well as many more. And he also has weekly coverage of the crude oil market and the 30 year T bonds as they both influence Forex markets tremendously. When you sign up for the Tiger Forex Report, you also gain instant access to Teddy's 60-minute webinar archive he just hosted, Forex Strategies and Fundamentals, What is Behind the Tiger Forex Report. For all the details and to start your 30-day Tiger Forex Report subscription today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. Are you ready to take your trading to the next level? Introducing Tom O'Brien's award-winning newsletter, Market Insights, your key to successful active trading. Tom O'Brien, renowned for his expertise in the financial markets, has designed Market Insights to be your daily guide to profitable trades. Tom publishes his daily Market Insights newsletter every market day before the market open, along with updates when warranted. Stay ahead of the game with Tom's real-time analysis and trade recommendations delivered straight to your inbox. Whether you're a seasoned trader or just starting out, Market Insights provides the edge you need to navigate the markets with confidence. Ready to join the ranks of successful traders? Head over to TFNN.com and subscribe to Market Insights today. Don't miss out on this opportunity to supercharge your trading results. Market Insights comes with a 30-day money-back guarantee for all new subscribers, so you have nothing to risk. Don't miss out on this opportunity to revolutionize your trading game. Head over to TFNN.com right now to join the thousands of traders who have already experienced the power of Tom O'Brien's award-winning newsletter, Market Insights, firsthand. TFNN, educating investors. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern. For free, each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV.
Welcome back, folks. We got markets open. You got an S&P up by 22 points, trading at 42.63. And it is pretty interesting when you look at the context, right? The, the two things that Tommy loves doing the most right now, Microsoft Paint. He loves playing on the computers. He's two years old. They said he'll be three in February. So he's inching towards three. His I'm brother. Inching towards three. You're going to be three. I'm going to be three, Oh, two. my goodness. I'm going to be three, too. I'm going to be three? Yeah, I'm going to be... Uh, a little bit older than three. But his brother is six, Landon, who's been on the program. He was on here last week. And he loves Microsoft Paint, too. So what we do is we sit them down next to each other with their laptops. Do you play with Landon with your with your t computer? Do you guys do paint? Do you do paint? Of Yeah. And they do Microsoft Paint. Microsoft, right? And between Microsoft and then you go to YouTube, those are the two they love on a laptop. You give them a laptop, they can do anything in the world on it and they want to do some Microsoft Paint, and they want to jump around YouTube. They can do Netflix, right? They could do uh, Amazon Prime. They could do HBO what Max. That? What's what that? that? What's that? Is that your tablet? That's my Microsoft. That is your tablet, huh? Look, Look right here. Hey, you're right here. Hey, there you are, right there. Do you want your tablet? You know, you want your mouse? Yeah. So let's jump around to the two companies that are reporting. The main event after the bell tonight, man, you got Google shares up by a percent ahead of that number. You got Microsoft shares up by half a percent ahead of that number. What do you want to do? You want to tilt it up? Tilt it up. Yeah, I'm trying to tell them they won't. They, 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 we, we got the camera right here. They got to be able to see you. Uh oh. Where'd he go? Where'd he go? Where'd he go? Where'd he go? Oh, there he is. Oh, where'd he go? Oh, there he is. Ah, where'd he go? Tommy. Oh, there he is. Oh, where'd he go? The old pastime of peekaboo, folks. You got little kids in the house? Never forget about peekaboo. Uh, let's jump to the Analyze tab and see what kind of type of move we're talking about for the earnings event. So Microsoft shares trading at $330 this morning. You're looking at about a $13 move priced in for their earnings event. After the bell tonight, we jump over to Google shares. Alphabet, $139 equity. You're looking at about a $6.40 move priced into their earnings after the bell tonight. The expected move on Meta, their earnings are tomorrow, remember. A much larger move percentage-wise from Meta. $3.15 is what you're trading at right now. You're talking about almost a $25 move in either direction from Meta shares. And then we get Amazon on Thursday, Amazon shares seven seventy three for one hundred and twenty seven dollar stock. You get the S and P's right now, up by about what six tenths percent, something like that. Yeah, six tenths percent. In the S and P Nasdaq one hundred up by about half a percent. Dow charging higher, up by about eight tenths. Dow catches Hi, a lift. Hi, Tommy. Hi, buddy. How you doing? You having fun on the show? You're going to put your tablet back up there? We're going to have to get you a high chair so that you, you don't... There he don't, is. Oh, there he is. Oh, where'd he go? Oh, where'd he go? Oh, oh. All right, let's check on yields as we open the market here. We got the 10-year. I want YouTube. I want YouTube. You hear him? I want YouTube. Okay, we can get some YouTube for you, buddy. Let's pull up some YouTube for you. Yeah. There it is. Which one do you want? You want you to go? You want your ghost? No, That's YouTube. No, 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 no. You don't want YouTube? No, too. Yeah. Look. No, too. Yeah, which one do you want? No, no, that? no, no. That's you? Up there? You want that one? Yeah. So markets catch a little bit of a lift. We're trading at 42.70 right now. You check out the action yesterday, uh, basically pushing the intraday highs yesterday in the market. We were up there to 42.80, got a brief spike. We're trading at 42.70. Quite a little sell-off into the close yesterday, coming into an important week. And, man, yields were in focus yesterday, and they are in focus yet again today. The tenure at 106.10 right now. There you are. Look, there you are. I can see you. Don't get frustrated. What do you want to do? What video you want? No. Hmm. Decisions. What do we got? We got dinosaurs. We got Blippi. Yeah, go ahead and push it. Okay. 
as we got markets making basically session highs. We jump around to some of the action we have going on here. You know, Israel takes a lot of the headlines right now, but that's not really moving the market, at least just yet. GM, though, we'll jump to them. So United Auto Workers strike muddies the profit outlook. That's putting it lightly. We jump over to GM shares on their numbers this morning. So they remove their guidance, which is what had this thing escalating lower. You see it on the earnings call at about 830. They remove the guidance going forward. You spike from 2950 down to 2820. The market says, ah, we're OK with that. We're spiking back to 2906 right now. They made 228 a share last quarter, which beat the estimates. <clears throat> it must be amazing coming into an earnings event where you're deep in the middle of a negotiation, right? You don't want to show that you make too much money. Otherwise, the workers are going to keep demanding more money. Um, and so it's interesting how this goes. So GM can no longer say if it will make up to $14, $14, $14 billion in profit this year because of the strike. Now in its sixth week, companies made the financial the company's financial future too difficult to predict well that should be understandable they made 228 a share though they beat the buck 84 revenue 44.1 billion an extra billion dollars than the market was looking for the costs have so far reached about 800 million in terms of what they've cost gm the company expects about 200 million dollars a week in additional work stoppage helicopter. related I costs helicopter. Helicopter. Yeah. where's the helicopter oh there he is yeah, and you just saw uh, yesterday that they have extra strikes going on at a Stellantis plant, I, I believe. So this one's still going on, man. We jump over to Ford shares. Uh -oh, Ford up. Oh, excuse me. Ford. I want Dominus Rex. Oh, we got a Dominus over here. We always bring the dinosaurs, folks. We know there are going to be something that we can play with. There it is. There it is. Oh, and Dominus Rex, folks. If you haven't seen Jurassic World from 2015, that's our big movie we're watching right now. Jurassic World from 2015 with Chris Pratt. You got Indominus Rex, the T-Rex, the Raptors, the whole deal. Uh, that's 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 the, the repeat movie that we are stuck in right now. But car companies, nonetheless, basically flat. You got GM shares surging higher on the open, actually up by half a percent after trading down. I mean, that's a... Wow, that's a 5% move at the lows there, down to $28. You're spiking to $29.31 for GM shares. We jump around to Apple. Apple shares, actually negative today when we get the markets in positive territory. Oh, it's Mosasaurus. I know, Tommy. All right, let's jump over to yields. Stay in focus here. Just chopping where we are, 106.11. Now, we've been talking about this channel line. Absolutely remarkable, the bounce we're getting off the bottom. If you're looking for an upside target, 107.21, you got about a point and a half above where we're trading at right now. That's the area that you might face a little bit of resistance if this channel line holds. Uh, we'll see if it does, right? You jump over to NVIDIA shares. Quite a day for them yesterday. NVIDIA, they're getting into Intel's business, man. The market loved it. You trade up from 410 to 430. We're trading basically flat this morning. You jump over to Intel shares. They get back some of yesterday's losses up by 1.1%. Stay tuned, folks. We'll take a look at some of the other equities with action this morning. We'll be right back. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Will the S&P 500 continue to climb? For bold trades on U.S. large cap stocks in either direction, trade SPXL, SPUU, or SPXS. Directions Daily S&P 500 Bull and Bear 
Leveraged ETFs. Direction Leveraged ETFs. An investor should carefully consider a fund's investment objective, risks, charges, and expenses before investing. A fund's prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a fund's prospectus and summary prospectus, call 866-476-7523 or visit directioninvestments.com. A fund's prospectus and summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. TFNN has just launched their new trading room, The Tiger's Den, hosted at Discord. TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. And now they are expanding their reach with The Tiger's Den, available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. In The Tiger's Den, you can look over the shoulders of Tom O'Brien and the other TFNN hosts while they analyze charts during their live Tiger TV programs and join an interactive trading community with hundreds of members exchanging ideas. Interact with other Tigers and Tigresses as they share trading ideas, news analysis, and discuss the market action all trading day, even at night and on the weekends. The Tiger's Den at Discord is accessible on mobile or tablets as well, so it's always at your reach. To sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders, just visit the front page of TF. NN.com. This program is brought to you by Vista Gold, traded on the NYSE American and TSX under the symbol VGZ. Welcome back. Welcome back, folks. We got the S&P up about 30 points, just chopping around where we started off the program at. You got the NASDAQ 100 up about 7 tenths percent right now, up 115 points. Dow up about 6 tenths percent right now, trading up 208 points. And we jump around to some of the other companies. We got Coca-Cola with their numbers this morning, charging higher, up by 3.1 percent for Coca-Cola shares. Beats earnings estimates and raises outlook as volume grows despite Price hikes, right? They just keep going, man. Earnings, 74 cents versus 69 expected. I mean, quite a revenue beat percentage-wise. 11.91 billion versus 11.44. Net sales rose 8%, excluding items. Orga organic revenue, so that's going to strip out acquisition, acquisitions or divestitures, climbed 11%. Absolutely remarkable, man. Uh, Coke has been raising prices over the last two years, but in July, the company said it was done hiking prices in the US and Europe this year. This quarter, its prices were up 9% compared with a year ago period. Remarkable. Uh, Coke's unit case volume, which unlike its net revenue, excludes pricing and currency, grew 2% in the quarter despite higher prices. So amazing, right? They're, they're selling 2% more volume when they've hiked the prices 9%. Whew. In North America, the company's volume was flat, but sh shoppers bought more Coke Zero and Fairlife dairy drinks. I tell you, folks, I was contributing until Tommy was off milk. He's not taking bottles anymore. He's almost three. But we drank Fairlife, and that was the milk that we drank. And if you're looking for some great milk, man, um, Fairlife has some great dairy as dairy goes. It's uh, ultra-filtered. There's more protein in there. It's a great drink. I mean, pretty remarkable that that's what Tommy was on, man. It's not cheap. Uh, not surprising there. For comparison, though, Pepsi reported that its North American be beverage volume shrank 6%. So holding steady when Pepsi is drink, um, shrinking 6%. That's quite a number. All of Coke's division, drink divisions reported volume growth. All of them. Yep, it's sparkling soft drinks and juice and dairy. Plant-based beverage divisions reported 2%. Water, sports, coffee, and tea saw 1%. I mean, imagine managing a business that big. You get that many divisions, and you're telling everybody 1% to 2% growth. Make it happen, people. For the full year, Coke now expects comp earnings per share growth of 7 to 8%, up from the prior range of 5 to 6 And they're also adjusted organic revenue 10 to 11 up from 8 to 9 I'm just... Bang up quarter, man. Across the board, I'm surprised it's only up 3%.
trading at 55.69. You got a positive market right now, and Coke just crushed it, in my opinion. Right, those numbers going over them, they crushed it. Now another company we've been talking about. Maybe this is the 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 bottom. Verizon had some strong numbers, man. They beat on some of the numbers out there. They're up by 6.6%. We've been talking about this equity. The only thing I will say is be careful right at this range. Because even if you take from the beginning of the year on this equity, and boy, this has been struggling much longer than this year. But if you do take this year, check out where we're bumping into. So be careful. All right? You just traded from 33 uh, excuse me, from 30 bucks up to 33. That's a 10% pop from where we were in the beginning of the month. Okay. Let's add the bottom line there if we can. This market just sold off 10 points here. We're going to get some volatility a little bit this morning ahead of the earnings. Pretty well defined channel line for Verizon there, right? Pretty well defined channel right from the beginning of the year, basically. We're pushing the upper boundary line. We've done that once twice, three times, four times, call it five times. This would be the sixth time this year that we've challenged the upper boundary line of that channel line. So put it on your radar. Now, our man Bud Ross, miss him tremendously, the channel king, the channel master. He would always say, folks, used to do a newsletter and a program at TFNN for many years. He had the tiger trading posts, the good old tiger trading post with our man Bud Ross. And he would say, the breakout is not when you break out of the channel. Okay, that's not the buy. If you're looking for a buy and you're trading off channels, what you want to look for is you want to look for it to break out of that channel line. And then it's going to come back and retest that channel line. So that's why it's nice to have these channels on your radar. Okay, because if this inch is above there, that's not the buy, man. It's done it a couple times. These are ranges, folks. It's an art, not a science. But you get a breakout. And then you get a comeback and a test of that line. Maybe that is your buy there for Verizon because, boy, it has been a couple years of pain. A few years, to put it lightly, right? What, you come into COVID at 60 bucks, You finish the year at 60 You make another high in the middle of 2021. And then it's been a one-way trip from 60 bucks to 33 over a period of the last, what, two, two and a half years for Verizon shares. But decent earnings when earnings have been a big problem for this company and uh, they catch a little bit of a lift for Verizon shares trading higher. So on the earnings front, right, strong earnings, man. You jump over to Boeing shares, a little bit higher there later in the week. Yeah, they're Thursday. For, no, excuse me. They're tomorrow for Boeing shares. They got a $7 move priced in for $182 equity for Boeing. We check back in on some of the companies reporting today. Microsoft, they trim some of those gains. Market gives it up a bit right now. You got Microsoft trading at 3.30, you're up by 72 pennies, you jump over to Google shares. Google holding steady up by 1.3% right now. You do see the power of Google, man. I got it, so, you know. So Tommy's watching a video on the computer that Google's running right now. And what's so funny is, so they're, they're showing ads on the stream that he left open. Think about this. Think about the business plan, okay? So we got the laptop going. Now I bring everything in here for the hour to keep Tommy entertained, all right? And I appreciate you all out there watching right now. Daddy. Yes, buddy. I'm perfect. Oh, we got that outside. Do you want some of your drink? Do you want some Pringles? That, that is, I want it. That is not outside. That is not outside. You want your T-Rex? That is in the house. That's in the house, huh? You tell them. Yeah. I want it. I want it. What do we got down there? What did I put down there, buddy? The password. Oh, did I? Oh, I did. There you go. So it's amazing, folks, uh, life in general, right? Tommy's two years and almost nine months. Is that right? Yeah, he'll be he'll be two years and nine months on November 2nd. And you can't get anything past him anymore. There's nothing. It's a it's a fully adult mind. Not quite, right? I'm no fool. He's he's not even three years old yet. But that's where you're at. And so what's so interesting is never being around young kids myself before to the degree that I am now, obviously, as a dad, you don't realize how much they know at what age, right? You used to hear three years, four years, five years, six years. You don't really know what they possess. By the time they're two and a half, folks, they're basically an adult. And I'm, I'm generalizing and I'm exaggerating a bit. But just then, so Tommy, 
got to get him out of the pacifier a little bit. That's the only thing that's hanging in there. Not the end of the world. He doesn't really wear it out. We pull it out of his mouth. Tell him it doesn't get dirty. He still likes it to have it. Like we all know, habits are hard to break, right? So right now he asked for it. I said, no, nah, that's it's outside. I'm not, you know, it's not outside. And he knew. He knew that. I had taken it out of his mouth before we started the program. I had put it down next to me. He looks at me. He goes, that's not outside. That's not outside. So if you're around kids in any fashion, the reason I say it, speak to them like adults, folks, because they are more capable than you can probably understand. And that's imagine. That's the way I go about it. Right? Right, Tommy? He's a little tired guy. All right, folks, stay tuned. One more segment. Market's giving it up a bit. S&P's up by 19. We'll be right back. The Gold Report. As a precious metal, gold is still king. It continues to hold the most effective safe haven and hedging properties across the global major trading hubs of the London OTC market, the U.S. futures market, and the Shanghai Gold Exchange. The Gold Report. Tom O'Brien publishes his weekly gold report every Monday morning for subscribers, consisting of coverage of the XAU, HUI, GDX, the dollar, bonds, the South African Rand, as well as 25 different mining equities with specific buy-sell recommendations. The Gold Report. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. Subscribe to Tom O'Brien's Gold Report newsletter now at TFNN.com. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com. Educating investors. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. Welcome back, folks. We got the S&Ps up by 23 points right now. We jump around to Disney shares. What's your color red? Disney what's shares. What's your color red? Is he red, Tommy? Here, take this out so we can hear you. No, he's not red. Is he not red? He's purple. He's purple. So we are now on to Lightning McQueen, folks. Lightning McQueen, if you are unfamiliar with Lightning McQueen, I am sorry that you are unfamiliar with the one and only Lightning McQueen. Uh, the movie Cars from Disney. I think it was put out in like 2004, 2002, 2006, something like that, man. Lightning McQueen, we got Cars 1, Cars 2, Cars 3. We're fans of them all. Uh, Cars 3, it's got good old uh, Jackson Storm out there. Car, Cars 1, anyway, that's what he's watching right now. But here's the kicker, right? He's watching Cars 
and he's watching a clip of it on YouTube. So who's getting paid for that? Google is. And that's our perfect segue to the last segment of the program, folks. We'll finish it up with some of the numbers that Google will be looking for. And boy, they're big numbers, man. Google shares trading right now up 1.4%. The market optimistic for their numbers after the bell. And you get into what they'll be looking for. How about, how about 75.97 billion? They're looking for $76 billion in revenue. I would love to know how the analysts look at, and I know they're all projections, right? But where's that last 0 .03 billion come from, right? Which is an extra $30 million over 90 days, okay? But yes, you're talking about $76 billion in revenue. They're looking for a buck 45 in earnings, okay? The numbers they'll be looking for breaking it down. YouTube advertising revenue, $7.81 billion. This is all over 90 days. Google Cloud revenue, $8.6 billion. Traffic acquisition costs, a big one there, what they're spending. $12.63 billion is what they'll be looking for. Be interesting to see if they have to say anything on the press conference. Now, it's going to be Microsoft and Google after the bell. Remember, uh, in January, they cut 12,000 jobs, 6% of their workforce. They laid off uh, some people in news. They laid off a couple hundred people in HR. Um, excuse me, recruiting, not HR. Nonetheless, we got the tech companies after the bell. We'll finish it up with the VIX. VIX, trading at 1962. Okay, that's the end. Hey, we're going to say goodbye to everybody. Bye, everybody. We got to wave. Bye, everybody. Bye, everybody. Thank you. Yeah. Thanks, folks. Stay tuned for Basil up next.